everyone, and welcome to this Aquadata Studio, working with database version control using Aquadata Studio and GitLab. I'm your host, Anil Mahadev. So this session is not about how to use Aquadata Studio specifically. If, uh, if you would require, there are plenty of videos on our YouTube channel that you can check out. But for this uh, specific purpose, I would like to guide you on the process of setting up uh, the version control using GitLab and how it ties into Aquadata Studio, and we can go from there. Uh, this webinar is going to be uh, uh, not the, I, I would like to keep some time for questions. So first and foremost, let's try to better understand what version uh, control is and why it is needed. As you all know, um, our databases are getting as complex as application development uh, practices. And using uh, distinguishing between SQL code and the application code should not be treated any any different because both are residing in, in the code repository. So in order for this code repository to reside in, what we have to do is to have like a centralized hub where development teams can combine and collaborate with each other without stepping on each other's toes and still being able to get the software out the door. So for that, we use version control. And databases are no different. So what I would like to do first is to go ahead and, um, and show you the process of setting up a GitLab uh, account. So what I'll do is I'll go and open up a brand new window. And here I'll type in gitlab.com. And here I'll just log out. Actually, I'll show you this in a new incognito window so that we can take a look at that. So here, let me go to gitlab.com. That's still saving. Let me. All right, let me do this. Uh, how about we can go ahead to the gitlab.com uh, website and there we can just go ahead and sign up uh, for an account. And right now I have signed up uh, for an account. And once you're here, you're asked to create a new project. So I'll go ahead and let's say, for example, create a new project here. And here you have a bunch of templates that you can choose from. So here for the example, I'll just go ahead and create a blank project. And here I'll just call it as uh, ADS webinar demo. And here I'll put it under this project URL. So I'll just put it under this. And um, here I'll just call it as uh, ADS webinar GitLab demo. And here you can put in as whichever you would like. You would like to choose a deployment option. You can choose as default. Here for the purpose of this uh, example, I'll just leave it as public. And uh, here I can go ahead and enable any kind of repository with an initialized readme and click uh, create project. Next, what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and look at some of this content that we have here. So here you can see, you can go and, and look at all of this metadata. And then in your project, you can, uh, first and foremost, is you go under a, a repository, you go under files. And here you can see, these are the first files that you have. Next, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go and open up um, PuttyGen. And you can download PuttyGen from the, by just doing a Google search for Putty. And this is where you can go ahead and generate a key. So here I would like to go ahead and generate a public key, a private key, RSA key pair. So I'll just go ahead and just randomly just mess around with this. And not to worry, by the end of the webinar, this project will be deleted and the keys also will be gone with them. So this is just for demonstration purposes. So here I would highly recommend you enter a key phrase, confirm the key phrase, and save the public key onto your local machine. And then you can save your private key here. And that's it. So now the, the next thing you might wanna do is to go to conversions and just say export uh, sshkey.com. So once you're done with that, you can then come into your account and click on preferences. And here you'll notice that you have your SSH keys. I'm not gonna click on them because it'll expose 
all of my keys. So you have to come in here and just copy your public SSH key that you would like. So it's as simple as that. Um, once you've established that, you can go back into your menu, go into your projects, and then go into your actual project that you're working with. So here I have already a project, and once I've done with it, next I need to go into ADS and right-click on the file system and go to version control and choose Git and say clone repository. And this is where uh, you can actually go into this Git location. Say, look, uh, for example, I'll click on this. I can go ahead and choose clone, and I can go ahead and say clone with SSH or with HTTPS. So if I wanted to clone this with SSH, since I already have the key information, I can go ahead and uh, choose that. Then I'll choose a different folder. So here I'll just put it on the desktop for simplicity. So I'll just create a new folder. Select and hit OK. So now it just asks me for a, a passphrase or wherever I have my public key, I can go ahead and get it from where I need it. So if I go to ADS demo, I can go there and I can get to my key. And once I'm done with it, I can hit login and it gives, it brings me all of this like this. So if I give a pull request first, it goes and gets me all the latest copy from there. Um, next, what we'll do is I'm actually gonna go online and create a new file here, okay? So I'm just gonna go to the web IDE and I'll just go ahead and create a, a brand new file here. So I'll call it as um, uh, adswebinar.sql. Okay, so this is my ADA, ADS webinar. So here I can just hit a comment. And then here I can just go ahead and copy and paste some code that I already have. And once I'm here, I can actually go ahead and hit enter. And what I can do now is I can go ahead and create a commit. And here I'll just say, add a new file, ADS webinar. So I can go ahead and put it to the main branch and commit. Excellent. So now all changes have been committed. Now, how do we verify that? We just right click on our file system on our directory and we just hit pull and we make a pull request and there you go so these are all the details that came back from the pull request and once that is done you can then go ahead and see the uh, ads webinar.sql and you can go ahead and you can just say version control and you can uh, go ahead and say show history here we don't have any history here so here i'll go ahead and uh, right click and say open now I'll go ahead and open this up in a SQL Server Query Analyzer window with my worldwide importers, and there you go. So now if I were to come back and if, execute this code, I'll get that. Now if I want to go ahead and add something different, so I'll say cities archive, and here I'll do a select star from application dot cities archive. So now I'll go and highlight this and run this. So now I get this example. So now if I want to go ahead and save this, I can actually go ahead and save this. And now you'll see that I have a exclamation mark that actually tells me, oh, Anil, you need to go ahead and, and check this in. But before I do that, I would like to show you, compared with base revision, so this is the one that you have in the repository, and this is the one that is right now on your local machine. So next what we'll do is we'll go ahead and check this back in by doing the commit. I'm gonna go ahead and stage this. And with this, what happens is I just need to add a comment. I'll just say added city archive, a list of queries. And I'll say commit staged. And voila, there you go. So now it's committed, it's checked in. Now let's go back to our our file here. And let's uh, just do a, a quick refresh.
And there you go. It has the most up to date here. And then if I were to look at uh, this one here, and if I choose um, any of this in the in the main file in the main project, so if I click on this, you'll notice that it has added the city archive with a list of plates. So that, in a nutshell, was how easy it was for us to actually go ahead and create, uh, you know, a version control using Aqua Data Studio and GitLab. Well, cool. Well, I just would like to thank all of you uh, for being on this webinar. It's been a, a real pleasure, and I, I can't wait to see what awesome uh, things you folks will do with ADS. And you can, and while we have the time, so if we go to aquafold.com, here you can see that you can start for free. So you can go ahead and take a look at all of these videos. And you can also download a free trial version at no extra charge. So you can go ahead and experience the full product, uh, except for the import-export. We have disabled that. But apart from that, there's a lot of resources. You have blog posts, you have support forums. Everything is there. So um and of course if you do need a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo we're more than happy to accommodate uh that for you and we also have our resource center where you can actually go into our various resources and just by highlighting a checkbox you can see what's new in all of these and look at all of these accompanying videos to help you so with that, I would like to come to the end of the webinar and I would like to wish you all a very happy and a great rest of your week. And thank you so much for choosing Idera Aqua Data Studio. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.